Good morning. Welcome to the Tain and Fern Free Church Virtual Sunday School. If you go along to the Tain and Fern Free Church Facebook page at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings, we're going to meet here to have a Bible story followed by questions and a craft. So here we are with the story. Welcome back. We've been studying in the Bible Explorer book for Sunday School, um, the life of Moses from his birth through to growing up in Pharaoh's house and then being called out of a burning bush by God to lead his people, the Israelites, out of Egypt, away from Pharaoh. God's deliverance, going across the Red Sea on dry ground. Um, and last week we studied more about how the Israelites were complaining and quick to forget God's goodness. And despite the fact that God provided both bread, called manna, and he also provided them quail and water to drink, they were still discontent. Um, last week, we learned about the Ten Commandments and what all of those were, uh, God's law that he gave to Moses and were written down on stone tablets and brought down to the people for them to believe and to obey. Today, we're introduced to a new character, and his name is Joshua. Again, we discover that God uses unexpected people to have his plan come about. Joshua 1-6 Life after Moses. Joshua became the leader of the Israelites after the death of Moses. God encouraged him at the start of his great task with these words, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What a wonderful promise. God is the same today and promises to be with those who trust in him. The name Joshua means the Lord saves and is similar in meaning to the name Jesus. Rahab. Joshua's job was to lead the people into the promised land of Canaan. He sent two men ahead to spy out the land, especially the city of Jericho. They were spotted, but hid in the house of a woman called Rahab. When the soldiers came to her house to fetch them, she hid them on the roof under stalks of flax, and then sent the soldiers off to look elsewhere. When you come to capture the land, she told the spies, be kind to me and my family because I was kind to you. The spies escaped from her house down a scarlet rope from her window on the town wall. Tie this rope in the window as a sign, she was told. Then you and your family will be safe. The spies then returned to Joshua with an encouraging report. The Lord will give us the land. Battle of Jericho. The people of Jericho knew that the Israelites were on their way to conquer the land. They were so afraid, they closed the city gates and stayed inside. God told Joshua how he must capture the city. Joshua did exactly as God said and told the people what to do. The battle plan. Day one to six. Line up. Soldiers, seven priests carrying trumpets, then other priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant, and the rest of the soldiers, action, all march round the city once. They did that for six days. Day seven, action. All the people march round the city of Jericho seven times. On the seventh time, all shout. This is what the Israelites did. And when they did, the walls of Jericho fell down flat. Joshua and the people conquered the whole city with God's help. Rahab and her family were saved. Joshua 7 to 24. Achan Sin. The people were told that all the silver and gold and valuable things in Jericho belonged to God. One man, Achan, stole some silver and gold as well as some clothes and hid them in the ground under his tent. But God saw what he did. Nothing is hidden from him. Achan's wickedness brought a lot of trouble to the people of Israel. Defeat at Ai. The next city that Joshua wanted to conquer was Ai. The men who were sent out to spy the area 
thought it would be easy to take the city. What a shock they got when the men of Ai won the battle easily. Joshua was upset about the defeat. He asked God why it had happened. God told him that someone in the camp had sinned by stealing the precious things which belonged to the Lord. This was why God had allowed their defeat. Joshua rose early in the morning and followed God's instructions to discover the culprit, Achan. Joshua confronted Achan with the sin and Achan confessed. The silver and gold and clothes were found buried under his tent. Achan was severely punished. The people threw stones at him until he died. His sin had a terrible result for him. The Lord God told Joshua to go and capture the city of Ai. This time they were successful. Large numbers of soldiers were placed in hiding on the far side of the city. Joshua and some soldiers attacked the city and then appeared to turn away in defeat. The men of Ai chased after them, leaving the city gates unguarded. The soldiers in hiding walked straight into Ai and captured it completely. A resounding victory for Joshua and the people of Israel. After the battle, Joshua built an altar to the Lord on Mount Ebal. There the people worshipped the Lord. Joshua read out the whole law of God to the people. Joshua led the armies of Israel to many victories. God helped them to win the whole land of Canaan. Then there was peace throughout the land. The other important task for Joshua was to divide the land of Canaan so that each of the Israelite tribes had its own part to live in. When Joshua grew old, he called the chief men of Israel together and gave them good advice. You must serve the Lord alone, he urged them. Choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. The people replied, The Lord our God, we will serve, and his voice we will obey. Fact file. We learned about a woman named Rahab. She wasn't a very important person in the city of Jericho at all, very insignificant. But did you know she's mentioned in the family tree of the Lord Jesus? She gave birth to Boaz, who married Ruth, who gave birth to Obed, who was King David's grandfather. Trumpet. This would have been an instrument made from a ram's horn. And this story is found in the Bible under the book of Joshua. It's an historical book. It tells of the campaign to win the land of Canaan under the leadership of Joshua. Throwing stones, a Hebrew method of capital punishment. You can read in the New Testament in Acts chapter 7 verses 54 to 60 where a godly man named Stephen was stoned to death because of his love for Jesus Christ. Stephen was the first Christian martyr or person put to death for their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Valley of Achor. The place where Achan was stoned to death was called the Valley of Achor, which means the Valley of Trouble. But in Hosea chapter 2, verse 15, God says that he will make the Valley of Achor a door of hope. Our God is truly merciful. His mercy is shown to us through his Son, Jesus Christ. It is because of his death and resurrection we can have the hope of eternal life. Think spot. Achan thought he could hide his sin from God. He was wrong. Think about this verse. You may be sure that your sin will find you out. Numbers 32, 23. When you think of your sin or something that makes God sad, ask God himself to forgive you because of what Jesus Christ has done. 
Today's memory verse is from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This memory verse can help you to cope. And did you know that when Jesus was anxious and, and worried in the Garden of Gethsemane in the New Testament, he prayed to God, his Father? We should pray when we are worried. So this is a very good verse for that. For our craft today, we are going to look back at the story of Joshua leading the Israelites to walk around and march around the city of Jericho that was a walled city and how for the first six days they did it one time only, blowing their trumpets, stopping and marching their feet. And on the seventh day they did it seven times and the walls came crumbling down. I don't have it before me, but you could use a little Lego figurine or um, some kind of uh, toy person figure for playing it out, reenacting it. Again, you could use toilet rolls to create your wall. You could use paper cups and cut the bottoms out. But ideally, I took about one toilet roll and cut it into thirds to make them this thick, and I'll explain why. You can do it any kind of size you want, but this seemed to work really well. So what you're gonna do, however big, however, however small you want your wall to be, I've made mine um, three um, columns deep, and then I've placed some sort of sweetie on the inside, and then a piece of paper to go on the top of those to cover it fairly well. Then more, rolls, add in more sweeties, it should hold, because you're not going crazy on it, but fill it however full you want it to be, and then a final layer, And when you fill it all the way up, then to write our verse down here, we have, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. And after it's been filled up to whatever level you want it to be, take a holes, maybe a child on the other side, or a child can do it on their own, and they just jostle it until the walls come tumbling down. And like a piñata, you eat what has fallen. So just a bit of fun for recreating a wall with the added bonus of um, getting to enjoy and share out the sweeties that are inside. Um, and it just reminds us, small scale, of what took place on that day in Jericho. During each week, we go over memory verses, and this was just one idea where you could hang it up on a clothesline or put it in your kitchen or in the child's bedroom just to have the verses in front of us. Dear Heavenly Father, what a great verse to reflect on and to have for a memory verse today. From Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous, do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And indeed, Lord, what a wonderful promise that is to us, that you are the same today and that you promise to be with us, Lord. Help us, Father, to be reminded that um, even Jesus, your son, was anxious. And Lord, he looked to you in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Lord, all of us have times where we feel scared or we feel concerned or, or anxious. Lord, help us to look to you first before we try to solve our problems for ourselves. And may we not grow anxious, but trust in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope you enjoyed that story. 
Now is the time to get started on that craft and to work on answering those questions. At 12.30 today, we'll be doing a Zoom chat live with all the different children who would like to partake and do that so that the kids can see each other and they can um, see what they've done with their crafts as well as verify their answers. So please feel free to come along. Just drop me an email at the email you see at the bottom here and I will make sure that you are included in that Zoom chat. Thank you so much and we'll see you next Lord's Day. Bye.